Hi guys, this is Weasel for PokerBrainiacs.com. We are going to be discussing the topic of set mining. What is set mining? It's when you make a call pre-flop with the sole intention of flopping a set and if you don't make a set you are going to be folding. So it doesn't include times when you are going to be making plays after the flop. Perhaps you are going to be floating your opponent or making some bluff raises. This is not set mining. Set mining is when you call solely with the intention of flopping a set, otherwise folding. In order for our set mines to be profitable, we are going to need to make a sufficient amount post-flop on average. As a rough statistic, you are going to flop a set 11.8% of the time. And if we knew that we were always going to get paid off by Villain, so any time we flop a set, 11.8% of the time, we are going to get Villain stack 100% of the time. This would theoretically mean we can invest up to 11.8% of the effective stacks, or we need to be able to make 8.47 times our pre-flop investment after the flop. Unfortunately, it's very unlikely that we are going to get paid off 100% of the time. In fact, it's more or less completely impossible. Sometimes villain is going to fold, so you flop your set, you fight a bet on the flop, and perhaps villain folds. Sometimes all the money is going to go in, and villain is going to show a flush draw, and villain is going to suck out. Other times you are going to hit your set, and villain is going to have an overset, and you are going to lose your stack. And of course sometimes Hero will fold, maybe correctly, maybe incorrectly. And in this scenario Hero is also not getting Villain's entire stack. Therefore we can see that the proposed numbers, the 11.8% of your stack, or making around 8.5 times your initial investment, are not going to be of much use. And we are going to need to revise our estimate of how much of our stack we can invest pre-flop, or how much we need to make post-flop in order for it to be profitable. And there are two ways that you will see that people do this. If you are browsing any poker forums, you will see there are two rules. There is the call 20 rule and there is the 510 rule. And both of these rules are pretty similar in what they are advocating. We will just consider them briefly. The call 20 rule, it says you need to be able to make 20 times your pre-flop investment after the flop. So if you call an open raise of three big blinds, for example, then your opponent is going to need to have 60 big blinds in his stack that you can win post-flop in order for it to be a profitable set mine. And as you can see, this 20 times is quite a lot bigger than the 8.47 times we'd need if we were theoretically going to stack villain 100% of the time. The 510 rule is very similar and it says don't invest more than 5% of your stack in a set mining opportunity, which is very similar to saying you need to be able to make 20 times your pre-flop investment after the flop. However, the 510 rule goes on to say that in special circumstances you can invest up to 10% of your stack. And the question is what are these special circumstances? and it's dependent on villain and it's dependent on the implied odds you think you have depending on villain's tendencies depending on, depending on villain's range and as a general rule the better your implied odds the more of your stack you can commit preflop so we've all already established we are never going to be able to profitably commit 11% or more of our stack but on some occasions we may think it's a good idea to commit 10% of our stack. It's going to be close and what we'd be doing by committing such an amount of our stack would be assuming that we are going to stack villain a huge amount of the time post flop. But how do we know if we are going to stack villain a huge amount of the time post flop? Here are some criteria. One, perhaps villain has a very strong hand. Perhaps villain is rarely 3-betting, perhaps villain has a 3-bet of 2%.
And when he does decide to 3-bet you, perhaps you can assume that he is the type of villain that is therefore going to have maybe pocket aces or pocket kings. And also it would be very useful to know that villain is the kind of player that is not going to be able to get away from his pocket aces or pocket kings. In this particular case, you may find that you have a profitable set mine. It is of course going to be very close, given how close you are to, to the threshold of it not being profitable. But assuming villain is pretty much never going to be folding his aces or kings post-flop, that 12% of the time you do flop a set, you are going to get villain stack a large amount of the time. If villain is the type of player that is going to be able to make some hero folds with his overpair type hands, then it's not going to be profitable to commit 10% of the effective stacks because you are just not going to get paid off enough of the time when you hit. In general, you shouldn't really ever be set mining in 3-bet pots. It's only very specific circumstances. As just mentioned, you expect villain to have usually aces or kings and you also expect villain never to be able to fold that hand post-flop. Apart from this specific situation, you should, should pretty much never be set mining in a 3-bet pot, at least 100 big blinds deep. Another way that our implied odds will go up is if villain is bluffy. So perhaps we don't necessarily think villain has a strong range, but we think that villain is capable of firing multiple streets post-flop uh, with some bluffs in which case our implied odds go up because when we hit our set maybe villain doesn't have a hand that he can pay us off with but maybe he has a hand that he would like to fire three streets with as a bluff so if villain is especially bluffy then we can still end up stacking villain by letting him bluff into us our implied odds go up if villain is a calling station so perhaps we think villain does not necessarily have a strong hand but if villain does hit a hand he is a calling station and it's unlikely that he is going to be able to find folds to several bets in which case you can extract extract value from a hand which you might not normally expect to be calling we of course want to consider the converse of this and that's the situations where we don't have very good implied odds and we may find that even if we meet the purposes of the call 20 rule so we can make 20 times our initial investment we may still find or decide that it's not going to be a great opportunity to set mine even though we can technically make 20 times our preflop investment one way this can happen is if villain just has a weak range and the typical situation this happens is villain is on the button hero is in the blinds and villain is just opening extremely wide from the button, maybe 40% more of hands. And it's just unlikely that when hero does flop a set with his pocket pair, it's going to be unlikely that villain is going to also make a hand that can stack off. In which case, hero is not going to be making enough post-flop and average when he flops his set, even though there's a decent amount of stack sizes behind. That of course doesn't necessarily mean you have to fold your pocket pairs in that particular scenario where villain open raises on the button. You can still flat call and if you flat call in a situation where you don't think set mining is going to be profitable you may have a plan that involves floating some flops or making some bluff raises in good spots. Another thing you can do is you can take your pocket pair and you can use it as a 3-bet bluff if you don't think it's going to be a profitable set mine but generally you shouldn't necessarily be three bet bluffing with pocket pairs if you think they are going to be a good spot for you to set mine and further to that point if you are planning to float or bluff post flop it's not strictly going to be a set mine set mine is calling again purely for the purposes of hitting a set and having good implied odds isn't going to be as important because you also can factor in that you have fold equity. And you may even find yourself in a situation, for example, we said that maybe with the 510 rule we can just about call a raise 
with a pocket pair for set mining purposes if we think our opponent is going to be very tight. So the typical situation is here are open raises from the button for example and villain three bets from the blinds and villain is a very tight three better and also is the type of player that is not going to be able to get away from aces or kings post flop. In this particular circumstance we may decide that it's okay to call for a set mine. But supposing villain doesn't only three bet very strong hands, so villain can have maybe some some three bet bluffs. In terms of set mining, it's not going to be a good spot for hero to call, just because he is not going to have sufficient implied odds. When he does make his hand post flop, it's just likely that villain is not going to be able to continue because his range is so weak. But if it's the case that villain is not going to be able to continue, then hero can still perhaps make the call with some pocket pairs in very in certain situations. And I don't recommend in general that you are calling three bets with pocket pairs. Your standard play should definitely be default. But in certain situations, you may find it's okay to still call with your pocket pairs. But you aren't strictly going to be set mining. You are going to do it because you think that you are going to be able to maybe float some flops and bets and turns. So the key thing that I'm really trying to point out is that you need to know why you're calling and whether it really is just going to be purely a set mine where any time you don't hit your set you are going to be more or less folding on the flop or whether it's a call which you think may sometimes get to showdown or perhaps you're planning on making some bluff raises and obviously if you think you are going to have some fold equity in the hand at some point then you are not going to need as good odds to make your call so basically what you have to do is you have to take these rules you have the 510 rule and the call 20 rule as a very basic as a very basic law you should not set mine unless you can make 20 times your initial investment post flop but you can begin to adjust that depending on estimates about villain. For example, perhaps villain is bluffy and you might say to yourself, well, I think I'm going to maybe get this player's stack a little bit more often post flop because he's the type of player that likes to fire three streets as a bluff. You could then perhaps make your call 20 rule, the call 15 rule or the call 16 rule, make an estimate and then so long as you can make that amount of your initial investment post flop, then you can assume that it is going to be a profitable set mine opportunity. So there is no specific amount of your stack you can or cannot invest. Obviously, as discussed, as soon as we start investing more than about 10%, then it mathematically just can't be profitable because villain is going to suck out some of the time. And also, if we only hit our set on the flop 12% of the time, then if we are ever investing more than 12% of our stack, it's not going to be profitable in the long run, even if we always stack villain, just because we are not getting the odds to call. But so long as you're investing 10% or less of your stack, it may well be profitable, so long as you can make a good estimate about villain's range and his tendencies and your implied odds. And as said, normally you are going to be pretty safe if you are following the call 20 rule. It's usually nearly always going to be a profitable set mining opportunity. But again, if you think villain is the type of player that you are not going to have good implied odds against for whatever reason, perhaps that player doesn't like to bluff, perhaps that player has a very wide range which won't be able to stack off, stack off post flop, you may even though you meet the criteria for the call 20 rule you may decide that it is not going to be a profitable set mining opportunity so there is no set answer to when and when you shouldn't set mine it's going to be based on estimates based on what you know about villain and villain's tendencies but you can definitely use the call 20 rule and the 510 rule as a very rough guide So I hope this has given you a slightly better idea of what set mining is and which situations you should set mine. This has been Weasel for PokerBrainiacs.com. Thanks for watching.